Hello mathematicians, thank you for joining me today. What we're going to have today is that we're going to have the mapping from r cubed to r cubed, which is given by x, t of x, y, z is 2x minus 2y plus 3z, 3y minus 2z, the negative y plus 2z. And our goal is going to be to find a matrix such that we have a diagonal matrix which represents this linear transformation, but in order to do that we have to find a non-standard basis of r cubed. So we both want to find the basis and we want to find the diagonal matrix which represents this. In order to do that, we're going to break this into parts. The first step we're going to do is we're going to find the standard matrix of this linear transformation. So to find the standard matrix, what we're going to do is we're going to say A is equal to, and so in each of these cases, I want to say, well, the coefficients in front of X's are going to form the first column. So I get two, zero, zero. Y's are the second column, so negative 2, 3, negative 1. And the coefficients in front of Z are the third column, so 3, negative 2, 2. Hence, the standard matrix, or the matrix multiplication that would represent this transformation if we had used the standard basis, would just be the matrix 2, negative 2, 3, 0, 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 2. Now, what we know is that we're going to have a diagonal matrix if we can find a basis which is eigenvectors for this linear transformation, that is the eigenvectors for this matrix. So the next thing we need to do is actually find the eigenvalues so that we can then find the eigenvectors. Now to find the eigenvalues, what we want to do is we want to solve for where the characteristic polynomial, which is a minus lambda i, we can take the determinant of that and we want that to be equal to zero. So in order to find that, we're going to have to take a minus lambda times the identity matrix and then find the determinant. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so as we find our determinant, we have a minus lambda i is 2 minus lambda negative 2, 3, 0, 3 minus lambda negative 2, 0, negative 1, 2 minus lambda. So now to find the determinant, what we want to do is pick a row or column, and we're going to take these entries times the determinant of the matrix, which is left over. So what I would have here is I would start off and I would say, well, if I pick the first column, I get two minus lambda times the determinant of the remaining matrix when I remove the first row in the first column. So that's gonna be the three minus lambda, negative two, negative one, two minus lambda. Now to find the determinant of the two by two matrix, I'm just going to take three minus lambda times two minus lambda, and then I'm gonna subtract negative two times negative one, which is just two. So I get two minus lambda times three minus lambda times two minus lambda minus two. Now, in order to continue finding the determinant, what I need to do next is move to the next entry in that column, the zero. And so I'm gonna subtract zero times the determinant of the matrix, which I obtained by removing the first column in the second row. But notice it doesn't matter what that determinant is because I'm just gonna get out zero when I multiply by zero. And we'll have the same thing happen when I take the third entry in that column and multiply by the remaining determinant of the matrix. Before I get to the determinant of this matrix, it's just going to be 2 minus lambda times, and now if I multiply these out, I get 6 minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared minus 2, and then plus 0. So I get 2 minus lambda times well, 6 minus 2 is 4, minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared is going to be 2 minus lambda times, and then I can factor this into lambda minus 1, lambda minus 4. And so what I get is my characteristic polynomial is just 2 minus lambda times lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 4. Now recall to find the eigenvalues, what I need to do is set this equal to 0. So if I set this equal to zero, it's nice because it's factored. So what I'm going to get is we'll say lambda one is two, lambda two is one, and lambda three is four. So my three eigenvalues are two, one, and four. Now if you wanted to change the order, that's okay. You just have to keep track of the order that you used. So I could call lambda one, one, lambda two, two, but whatever I pick, I just want to make sure that I keep track of that as I go along. Now that I have my eigenvalues, I can find my eigenvectors. And in particular, what I'm going to do is find the eigenspace for each of the eigenvalues, which again is just 
the null space of a minus lambda i for the given eigenvalue lambda. So in this case, I found a minus 2 times the identity matrix is I'm just plugging in 2 for lambda, and I would get the matrix 0, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0. So if I want to find the null space, I need to row reduce this, which I've done here. And so once I've row reduced this, I just want to say, okay, what are my free variables? And in this case, there's a leading one in the x2 column and the x3 column. So x1 is going to be my free variable. So the null space is going to be precisely the set of vectors that look like, well, x1 is free, so I'm going to call that t. Now, if I look at this first row, this says that x2 is equal to 0. And if I look at the second row, I get x3 is equal to 0. So my null space is going to be the set of vectors of the form t comma 0 comma 0, such that t is an r. And in particular, I'm going to need 1. So I'm going to say that if I find a basis for this, I just pick one. So I'm going to let t be 1. So the eigenspace, which is equal to the null space of a minus lambda i. So the eigenspace for lambda 1 equals 2 is the null space of a minus 2i, which is precisely just the set of all vectors of the form t0, 0. zero which is the space, which is the span by the vector 1, 0, 0. So what we can say is that 1, 0, 0 is an eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda 1 equals 2. Now, as we find our next eigenspace for lambda 2 is equal to 1, again, we're going to find a minus lambda i, which is a minus 1 times i, is 1, negative 2, 3, 0, 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1. Again, I want to find the null space of that matrix. So I'm going to row reduce it, which it row reduces into 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0. So now as I find the null space, I'm just going to say, well, the free variable is x3. So what I get is the null space is going to be the set of all vectors of the form. Well, the third component can be whatever it wants. Once I find that, I see x1 plus x3 is equal to 0. So x1 is equal to negative x3. So that is x1 is negative t, and x2 minus x3 is equal to 0, so x2 is equal to x3, so we get t. So the null space is the set of all factors of the form, negative t, 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 such that t is a real number. So now if I want to find a basis for that, I'm just going to plug in t equals 1, and I'll get negative 1, 1, 1, and so the no eigenspace of the null space of a minus i is equal to the span of the vector negative 1, 1. And therefore we get that negative 1, 1, 1 is indeed an eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda 2 equals 1. Now that I have my eigenvectors, what I want to do is say, well, this is the basis which will result in a diagonal matrix for t. So therefore we need to convert our standard matrix into a matrix which uses this as a basis. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to have to determine how to map from B to the standard basis. And then we're going to perform a linear transformation in the standard basis. And then we're going to have to map the answer from the standard basis back to our basis B so that in the end we'll end up with a diagonal matrix. So the first thing we need to do is find the matrix P which maps from B to the standard matrix. Now this transition matrix is given by, well, since we're starting at B and ending at the standard basis, we can get that as 1, 0, 0, is I'm just taking vector 1 and turning it into a column. My vector 2 then becomes a column, negative 1, 1, 1, and my vector 3 becomes a column, so then 7, negative 4, 2. Therefore, P from my basis B to my standard basis is given by 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, 7, negative 4, 2. Now, if I want to find the map from the standard basis back to B, well, that's just going to be the inverse. So P inverse will map from the standard basis to B, 
And so what we can do is we can actually find the inverse of this matrix. And now I would suggest doing that with some your calculators or some type of technology. Now what this means is that if we want to find the matrix that represents T with respect to some basis that's going to end up being diagonal is we would say A with respect to the basis that we gave in terms of the eigenvectors is going to be P inverse AP where we found P inverse and here again I found that was my calculator I'm just writing that down I'm going to multiply by the standard matrix then I'm going to multiply by P and so if I find the composition of these, I multiply them all together and I get the matrix 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 4. So now you should actually go through and multiply these to make sure you get this, but recall that the whole point was to find a diagonal matrix. And we know that this diagonal matrix is going to be of the form, well, it's diagonal, where the diagonals are the eigenvalues in the order that you chose the eigenvectors. Now, if I had written the eigenvectors in different order, I could have ended up with the eigenvalues at different places on here so I could get a different diagonal matrix. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you want to make sure that the order that you pick you stick with so that at the end, yes, I get my first eigenvalue was 2, my second was 1, and my third was 4, so I get the matrix 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 4. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope you learned something today, and I hope you enjoyed the process along the way. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to know which videos are helpful, and it helps other people to find these videos so that they can also get help. Thank you.